Dear brother and sister, the saints in Christ, welcome a new episode. Today's episode is the second one and the, uh, will be also the last one regarding this big statue that been like uh, uh, erected or installed in Dronka in Asyut very recently and it has lots of issues at the moment. Anyway, today's episode's title is the statue of the Virgin is a turning point in the history of the Coptic Orthodox Church towards idol worshipping. Uh, before I start the episode, just I remind you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. Uh, and at the end of it, if you think it's worth it a like, give it a like. And if you can share it on your social media, that would be great. Uh, now let's start now our episode. Uh, the Coptic Orthodox Church has been broken, breaking, sorry, the uh, commandment of both like uh, uh, don't to have a statue or any image like they call it like uh, icons she was having icons and we've seen in the pre previous episode that both uh, metropolitan bishoy and uh, bishop Raphael said the coptic church refuses uh, statues but accepts icons so as if breaking the half of the commandment all right so now actually they go deeper they break the whole commandment both in icons and in statues i'm not sure whether bishop Raphael would change his mind or not i think he will but this is just an assumption uh, and this way the coptic church breaking the whole uh, commandment fully idol worshiping so it's a cup of spiritual idolatry uh, is full so there is no other option but to drink the full cup of God's wrath because of this idol worshipping uh, today's episode is analysis of uh, a video for uh, Metropolitan Ioannis uh, on the day that actually he was fixing the statue of St. Mary over there, what a shame, fixing a statue. And after that, yes, uh, consecration and worshipping and uh, uh, nailing and the, uh, offering incense, it's all over idol worshipping. And uh, uh, it was actually given to me by uh, a great uh, blessed uh, mighty sister named Sally Harb and uh, if you uh, uh, if you understand uh, a Syrian language uh, you can uh, watch her uh, channel and also her Facebook I put both links in uh, the description also I put also the link of the uh, of the uh, uh, sermon of uh, Metropolitan Ioannis on that day uh, where he was fixing, they put in the this statue uh, in its in the monastery of Saint Mary in Dronka and Asyut. I put also the link there. Okay, the link is about 17 minutes, so I'll analyze most of the items in uh, in that video. So first of all, he said he visited Lebanon between 16 to 17 times. Every time he goes to Harissa, Harissa is the name of an, a village in Lebanon where actually a huge Timsal of Virgin Mary is there, all right? Been there, I he mentioned, since 1910. So you talk about more than 100 years over there. And he said, I go there to get the blessing of this particular uh, statue. And he repeats this, that the statue having a, a blessing and whoever, uh, uh, like, look at it, uh, will whatever. So first of all, well, like, we will analyze this. So now I would like to analyze what does it mean the statue has a blessing that he used to have the blessing and he mentioned in his sermon many times that he is sure, he is 100% sure that this statue would be a blessing for everyone. Uh, I am the first of them. This is what he said, not me. So what does it mean that you take a blessing from the statue of whoever, of St. Mary or whoever? This is our an idol worshipping. Up 100%. You might disagree. It's entirely up to you. We haven't seen anything like that in the Bible. So what does it mean? You get a blessing when you look at the 
the, the statue of St. Mary. Or when you go and uh, like, uh, take a blessing from it. You will be born again, by the way. Your sins will be forgiven. Uh, some gifts will be given to you, like to, to cast out demons in the name of uh, St. Mary. Uh, will you be able like, to perform like any gift by St. Mary? It's all the work of the Holy Spirit. So what does it mean? You get a blessing from, from the statue of St. Mary. What a shame. And if you tell me uh, uh, there were two statues uh, the, uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the tabernacle, I would encourage you to watch my episode number, episodes number 186, one, sorry, 168, 169, and 170, where I killed and analyzed all this stuff. Dear brother and sister, getting a blessing from a, a materialistic thing is the work, it's a superstition thing, magic, sorcery, and idolatry. Whether it is a stone or a piece of, uh, of, of wood or metal uh, or, or bana, to tell me this is the, the body and the blood of Jesus and you worship it, this is all idol worshiping. And if you think it has uh, any spiritual power, it, that you get when you touch or when you eat this or whatever, this is all superstition stuff. All right. Second point in the in the uh, uh, in in his sermon, he said that he asked from Doctor Gerges Gauli to uh, to sculpt to sculpt the uh, the statue. And five years, sorry, five months after he this uh, this doctor finished sculpting the the uh, the statue, he said, "I went and asked him to change the face." Then he continued saying, "This is the Virgin. This is Virgin Mary. There is no one is more beautiful than her. What a shame!" So this means what you'd like to put a face of your own imagination and you think it, it she is the most beautiful one uh, if you say spiritually we might let it go but with this situation not really uh, especially we know uh, from a pre previous episode that when they said uh, uh, St. Luke mentioned, uh, like, uh, uh, painted the first icon of St. Mary that was a lie and even they said this, but I forgot to tell you uh, because if you go and search even in the, uh, on the internet and they tell you between brackets uh, it was lost of course it was lost <laughs> it was not there in the first place anyway so what face was in, uh, in his mind to make it for St. Mary uh, is it uh, 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 um, Marilyn Monroe, for example, or Princess Diana, or one of the Miss World cont contests? So this means what he is, he's doing his own imagination, call it St. Mary, consecrate it, offer incense, glorification, kneel before it, and hallelujah, it's idol worshipping. What a shame. So having this idea and to do it in your own imagination is a fully idol worship or idol worship process or idol worship project. All right. And after, after that, he will convince you guys and himself, of course, number one, ah, this is St. Mary. Oh, really? I oh, yeah, this is the statue of St. Mary. Really? Yeah. And yes, he's consecrated, offer incense, kneel before it, glorification. And after they say, well, we don't worship idols. Yeah, that's fine. Third point, uh, naming of the, the place. He said, we call it, uh, he wanted uh, uh, to call it Harissa at the same name like in Lebanon. But he said, uh, uh, Sayyidna al-Baba said, no, we have our own. Then he suggested, how about Al the queen? Wow. And told him, yeah, that's fine. Had the queen. From where did actually get with this one? Yeah, you might tell me. Ah, uh, there is uh, a psalm that says the queen sat at the right hand of the king. No, this is this, this is a prophecy that about the church at the right hand of the Lord. Anyway, so the New Testament never mentioned this title for Saint Mary. 
And by the way, even Saint Augustine, when he was uh, commenting on the uh, episode and, and uh, uh, this prophecy, he said, "The one at right, uh, the right hand side of the king is the church." Uh, number uh, uh, next point, uh, Saint John, the beloved. Uh, when he was getting the, this vision of the book of Revelation, part of it that actually he ascended to heaven and he saw plenty of stuff there. When he went up there, yes, he saw the throne of God. And he saw the Lamb of God. But to the right of him was not St. Mary there, by the way. And he did not see St. Mary in the whole vision up there. So it is not definitely there. Very normal. She is waiting in the paradise like any other true believer that passes away. All right. However, I will show you now a clip for Bishop Raphael, where he assures St. Mary is even buried <laughs> body and soul in the paradise. This is like too much, but anyway, but he assures what that was an answer for a question. Is St. Mary in paradise or at the right hand of the king in heaven? And he assured she is buried body and soul in paradise. All right. So she is not in, in heaven. Uh, uh, only the body of Jesus is in heaven. So let's watch this and come back again. جسد العذراء مريم هو موجود حاليا في الفردوس ولا الملكوت يعني هو بيقال جلس الملكة عن يمين الملك في الفردوس في الفردوس جسد العذراء خلي بالكم غير المسيح جسد العذراء ماتت واندفنت والملائكة حملوها وهي مائتة امم مش قامت من الاموات تمام حملوها والجسد شايلينه في السماء ميت لكن في يوم القيامة العذراء اللي هي مدفونة في السماء دي هتقوم زينا تمام لكن المسيح غير العذراء المسيح هو الله عشان كده لما مات قام وصعد بنفسه امم خدي بالك في فايبل الاثنين لان الناس تظن ان العذراء جسدها صعد زي المسيح لا ده جسدها محمول مائتا زيها زي القديسين زي القديسين تمام بس القديسين اجسادهم في الارض لسه حد صعد ارواحهم ارواحهم هي اجسادهم في الارض ارواحهم في الفردوس تمام الوحيدة اللي جسدها هناك وقد يكون كمان إليا وأخنوخ تمام لكن بقية الأجساد في الأرض جسد بقى الوحيد اللي دخل للأقدس العليا جسد المسيح It was very short very very clear No he assured she was she died buried after that angel came lifted her up like that and she is buried in paradise and when the, the, the host of the program uh, assured to him, he did not say yes or no, but he assured she is in paradise, but, which means she is not in, in heaven. And they assured only the body of Jesus is the only body in, in heaven. All right. So will you believe me when I kept saying that? Or now you have to believe your, your Sayyidina or just you go blind behind them. If you go blind behind them, I tell you what the Lord just said about this. In the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 14, let them alone. They are blind leads, leaders of the blind. And if the blind leads the blind, both will fall into a ditch. All right? It's up to you. Point number four, he says, again, uh, let this statue of St. Mary be a blessing for everyone. We'll cover this, but he put, puts now two more uh, things. Uh, uh, a blessing for everyone who looks at the statue spiritually and he repeats again whoever looks at the statue spiritually God will work in his heart so we'll discuss those two points what does it mean looking to the statue spiritually can anyone tell me but give me something like reasonable logical and biblical as well what does it mean to look at this statue spiritually? Like what? Praying to it, idol worship. Uh, crying to it, idol worship. Offering incense, lighting candles, idol worship. Oh, this is your spirituality. Second point. It says that God will work in his heart. 
what do you mean God will work in, the, in his heart? We know that the Holy Spirit is the one that works in our heart, that convicts us. And when he has come, this is the Holy Spirit, he will convict the, the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. John 16. So the one actually that will work in your heart is the Holy Spirit. The one is in charge of convicting you. All right. So when you look to the statue of St. Mary, how God will work in your heart? Of course, God has nothing to do with these statues. St. Mary will convict you, not her job. So it's all rubbish. I would like to come back again to the, what does it mean, uh, look at it with spirituality. When Solomon, the king, finished the, uh, the temple building-wise, he has, or he had actually a long, beautiful spiritual prayer that to the Lord. So actually what happened? The Bible teaches us in the book of uh, 1st King chapter 8 uh, when they start consecrating so that the priests could not continue ministering because of the cloud for the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. I stop here for a, for a tick. Actually when they were consecrating it the presence of God came as a huge big cloud to the extent even the the priests could not continue there, couldn't breathe, so you had to go out because the glory of God filled the whole place. And by the way, before I move, the glory of God actually, so the Lord Yahweh was actually dwelling there until, until when actually the exile to Babylon happened, over there, Prophet Ezekiel was there and the Lord showed him a vision. Actually, the glory of God was yeah, like, was up. Like in, in other words, the, the glory of God, he showed him a vision. The glory of God departed from the temple and actually moved into the mountain again is the temple, which is the mountain of olive. And he stood there, by the way, so they didn't go back. After that, actually, they, the temple was destroyed and burned down. So, and he left it. He departed from the, from, the, uh, from the temple. And just to continue about this, didn't go back. And remember, from where the glory of God stood, Lord Jesus actually ascended to heaven. And according to what even the angels said to the disciple at that time Jesus whom going like that he'll come same way down which also in the book of Zechariah that he will come back again and his feet will stand on the mountain of olives all right so just this about this after that Solomon kept praying I would like to quote part of the prayer like to answer whoever looks spiritually to the to the to uh, uh, to the statue of Mary. Then Solomon said, "Whatever prayer, whatever supplication is made by anyone or by all your people, Israel, when each one when each one knows the plague of his own heart and spreads out his hand towards this temple, which is." the dwelling of Yahweh. That's why I spoke about the, the glory of Yahweh. So he spreads his hands towards, not the statue of the cherubim, but to the temple where actually he meant the, uh, uh, the dwelling of Yahweh. Then here in heaven, your dwelling place and forgive and act and give to everyone according to all his ways, whose heart you know, for you alone know the hearts of all the sons of men. So he said, like, and it's a long prayer, and each time he says, if, if they've been taken, for example, as, as captives, and in the, in the land of their captivity, they stretched their hands toward this house. So listen and hear from there. So he, all his prayer was 
a direct where to Yahweh where to look to Yahweh to the temple where actually the the dwelling of Yahweh was all right but this one telling you what look at the statue of St. Mary what a shame he's encouraging you for idol worshiping dear brother and sister wake up fifth point in the uh, in that sermon thing he says he, like a prayer to bless the people we ask our mother the virgin to bless our country to uh, preserve or keep you my beloved may the blessing of our mother virgin mary uh, who came to this place uh, stay forever or till the end of the days my analysis is to bless the congregation of God not in the name of Mary in the book of Numbers chapter 6 and the Lord spoke to Moses saying he speak to Aaron and his sons saying this is the way you shall bless the children of Israel say to them the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord lift up his countenance countenance be up you and give you peace so they shall put my name on the children of Israel and I will bless them not the name of Moses not the name of Abraham but in the name of Yahweh so how can you bless people in the name of someone else than, other than that than God than Jesus and how come that you ask St. Mary to keep this? No, she ha doesn't have any power. Not her job. It's God's job. Uh, also, that was from the Old Testament. How about in the New Testament? I, I picked only two. I can get you more than ten, by the way. Two, like, prayers for the blessings. I'll get you one from uh, the book of Judah. The last two verses of the book of Judah. And also some from first uh, Peter chapter 5 the Judah one says now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God our Savior who alone is wise be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forever amen and if we go to first Peter chapter 5 but may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, established, established, strengthen and settle you, to him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. So this is how to, how to bless people in the name of Jesus, not in the name of uh, uh, St. Mary. All right sixth and last point of this uh, episode let's watch a very short clip for him like a metropolitan Johannes uh, assuring it will we'll discuss three points only of this one so let's watch this and come back again <laughs> وأيضا أمنا لأننا أخصانا في الكرم الحقيقي فأنت أم الله أم الكرم الحقيقية وأمنا لأننا أخصانا في الكرم الحقيقي أنت الملكة الأمنا العميقة الإحساس بنا ففي قصة عرس قانا الجليل تشفعت للرب دون أن يطلب منها أحد هي الملكة أمنا وتشعر بنا فقد اتهمت ظلما فتشعر بالمظلومين وكانت فقيرة فتشعر باحتياج الفقراء وكم تألمت فتشعر جدا بالمتألمين فهي أمنا العميقة الإحساس بنا والشفيعة الأمينة من أجلنا وطوبة لمن يأخذ السيدة العزراء شفيعة له وأنا ما قلت 
لم يحدث ان التجأت للسيدة العذراء مرة واحدة واخذلتنا First point he says Saint Mary is the mother of God Saint Mary is the mother of the true vine and she is our mother because we are branches in the true vine what a heresy this one by itself can take an episode i'll put just a, a very quick one only one like one point on this or two points in this first one this is stealing the glory of jesus christ giving it to saint mary straight away and this is the heresy to do this by the way in the prayer in the verses of the of the uh, prayer of the uh, uh, third hour you say you talk to saint mary you pray to saint mary telling her you are the true vine no saint mary is not the true vine jesus called himself the true vine second point accordingly by the way, St. Mary is not the mother of the believers. St. Mary is just one believer. She is a sister of us. She is a sister of us. She is not our mother. All believers have only one heavenly father. They don't have a mother. All right? And even when the Lord said to St. John, Behold, this is your mom to, to, to care for her. As of that time, he took her to his house. He told him, This is, be, behold your mom. He didn't mean, the mother of the believers, but only he, like he told him, consider her as your mom. So he gave it to him uh, as like uh, to take care, to care for her. So, so in in the prayer of the third hour, he call, he call her the, uh, oh my goodness, second point in that short clip, he said, and the blessed is who takes Saint Mary as his own intercessor. What a shame! What a heresy! Where about in the Bible, actually? The, 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 did any one of the apostles, whether the 12 or 70, or all the fathers of the first three centuries spoke about the, something called the intercession of St. Mary? It is a heresy that came into being in the fifth century, not before that. And what does it mean? Blessed. So you're adding uh, like another uh, beatitude. If it is actually blessing, to have St. Mary's intercession could have been given by Jesus himself as an honor to St. Mary, but he didn't. Third point is a shameful one. He said, while he's like about to be in tears, what a godly man. He said, never ever even once, St. Mary, let me down. Are you sure? Here we go. Episode number 78, I brought to you what this Metropolitan said to his people in August 2020, exactly three years ago. During, again, the fast of St. Mary at the time, it was the Corona time, and he kept asking people, repeat after me, I'll say it in Arabic, then give you the translation, Ya Hanuna, Shil Corona, O passionate, uh, remove the corona and ask the people to say it after him, after him with the fervent uh, prayer uh, through the intercession of St. Mary and what happened? but there was no voice no one answered so watch this anyway and come back again <laughs> فقولوا ورانا يا حنونة قولوا ورايا يا حنونة شيلي الكورونا يا حنونة شيلي الكورونا يا حنونة شيلي الكورونا أم النور تدبر الأمور أم النور تدبر الأمور So he was encouraging people, repeat after me. So actually what happened? So I haven't heard anything. This would remind me with something. You remember 
when Elijah was in contest with the uh, the uh, the worship the the, uh, the worshipper of Baal, those priests and the prophets of Baal, in the book of First Kings chapter eighteen, it says the following. And those people called on the name of Baal from morning even till noon, saying, saying what? Ya Hanuna, Shri Qurana, sorry, sorry. Baal, hear us. Which exactly? Ya Hanuna, Shri Qurana. But there was no voice, no one answered. Did you see what, what I'm, I'm doing? Yeah, those worshippers of the idea of Baal, they kept saying like half a day, but those guys kept dealing, saying this about one year. And there was no answer, no voice. And now, let's watch his photo having uh, this needle. So, not only him, but all of them. So this means what? He did not believe in St. Mary, all right? So she let him down, right? That's why he ran out uh, like, sorry, that's he ran to get this uh, injection, right? Here we go. And he says, or he said, never ever let me down. So what about this? Let you down, right? Okay. So I would like to ask you a question, dear brothers and sisters. They taught us many, many years ago, all the time, that St. Mary's intercession never rejected. Jesus cannot reject this. So what happened? in uh, with this situation like three years ago bad luck actually she did not ask she, she, she can't have the power to ask everyone in the paradise just in a, a waiting spot read the last two verses of uh, ver uh, of psalm 115 or watch my two episodes number 33 and 34 those who passed away they don't uh, they don't pray, they don't glorify the Lord, they, they, they don't, nothing, they have absolutely nothing, they are in a, a, a silence like situation, they, don't, they can do nothing, they don't anything, they do nothing. So, she, uh, you rely on someone who is dead, dead is dead. Yes, to God, they are alive in his life, because they moved from one spot to the other, but to us they did. All right. So, did the uh, Lord just uh, decided not to uh, respond or not to uh, to uh, to listen to her intercessions, or actually he doesn't do anything? Definitely does not. Now, if you'd like to know the true Christianity, dear brother and sister, read your own Bible. Ask the Holy Spirit and the Lord to to guide you, to teach you, so you discover how much lies those guys just keep broadcasting and filling your ears and your mind with all this stuff all right if you think the uh, video worth it a like give it a like you can if you can share it on your social media it would be great and unless the lord comes we'll meet again in another episode may the lord bless you all